All right, time for a new video. This one is about impulse. Now, impulse is related to the previous video about momentum. Um, it's definitely related to momentum. Impulse involves uh, measuring the change in momentum when an object is experiences a force. So um, impulse, you might also talk about impulse force, which is basically when a moving object strikes another object, there's going to be an impulse force that is applied to both objects, actually, because, of course, Newton's laws, um, forces are equal and opposite. So if one thing uh, causes a force on another thing, the other thing causes a force right back on the first thing, right? So um, anyway, so say you've got a car here, crashes with another car. Don't worry, I'm sure this was a test crash, not a real crash. Otherwise, there's no way there'd be a video of it or a picture of it like this. Um, so anyways, I'm sure no one was hurt in this picture, but, uh, both of these cars were moving, right? This one was moving that way. This one was moving that way. They hit each other. They both experienced a force and they both applied a force to the other car. So there you go. What was that force? Well, we can figure it out if we know their momentum and we know how long the collision took place. So those are the two things you need to know for momentum, All right? Uh, sorry for impulse. Impulse. So here's another case. Um, here's a baseball player, and he's swinging his bat and hitting a ball. So both the bat and the ball would experience an impulse in this scenario. All right. So impulse basically involves um, how much force is applied to an object when it hits something. All right. After it's been moving. So let's move on and get into some details. All right. The question is, how do we calculate impulse and why is it useful in physics? Well, impulse is going to equal, this looks a little bit complicated, but basically what we have going on here is average force, change in time, mass, and change in velocity. Okay, so change in time, that's how long the impact or the, the force lasts. So the amount of time over which the force is applied is this, this guy, All right? Average force, that's what we're trying to calculate, actually. Often this part is called the impulse force. So this is what we'll usually be trying to calculate in this scenario. Then you also need to know the mass of the thing that is moving and how much its velocity changes. Okay, so here we've got uh, V stands for final velocity and U stands for the initial velocity. So if you subtract them, you get the change in velocity. Okay, so if we have any, th any three of these quantities, whoops, if we have any three of these quantities, um, then we can calculate the fourth one. Okay, so typically, like I said, we use it to calculate average force. All right. So let's look at, a, at an example, because that's the best way to figure out what we're talking about here, um, typically. So here we go. Um, here's an example. We I didn't write down the scenario here, but what's going on? Basically, a car is crashing into a wall. This is after it's all taken place, and they put this on display. But let's, take, let's rewind back to when this thing was on a test track, and it was slammed into a test wall to see what happened to its, you know crumple zone there in the front and everything. All right, so what was going on? Well, let's say the mass of the car was 1,300 kilograms, which is totally reasonable for a small car. The final velocity is zero because, well, let's face it, it crashed into the wall and stopped. So zero meters per second is the final velocity. The initial velocity was 28 meters per second. And the change in time, let's say that the impact lasted for one-tenth of a second. Okay, so... Um, all of those are reasonable numbers. Those might actually happen in a real crash. So let's do a calculation. What is the average force on the car during the impact with the wall? All right, so we have average force times change in time is equal to mass times change in velocity. So that means the force if we get all of our numbers written down here is going to be equal to 1,300 
kilograms multiplied by the change in velocity, which is going to be negative, I guess, um, since we're decreasing in velocity, 28 meters per second divided by the change in time, which was 0 0.1 seconds. Okay, so there we go. What are we going to get with that? That's complicated. Well, I have my calculator right here, and I've already done the calculation. So hopefully you're following along, and you will discover the force is 364,000 newtons. Yikes. That is a big force, right? You might also write that as 364 kilonewtons. All right. So there you go. Now, how could I make that force be less than that? And the answer is uh, pretty simple. I could decrease the mass of the car, but that's actually, you know, that's not really practical. I have a car. It has a certain mass. I can't really change that. So I can't really change this. I could be driving slower. That makes it safer. I will have less impact. I will have less impulse if my change in velocity is smaller. Or I can spread out the collision time so it takes longer to finish the collision. And this actually is exactly what is attacked by um, automobile engineers when they're thinking about safety. <coughs> they try to make this impact last as long as possible. So that's why the front of your car is designed to crumple. Let's take a look back at that picture again. Right? Notice it's squished. The car is the front of the car is squished all up like this. All right. Um, due to the fact that this crunches like that and squishes up, that means that the impact lasts for a longer period of time, and that means that less force is actually applied to the car during the collision. So if the impact is shorter, then there's a larger impulse. If the impact takes longer, then there is less impulse. So the longer that you can make this impact take, the less force there is and the less likely you are to hurt the people inside. Though, of course, the car gets demolished. But, you know, cars can be purchased. Cars can be bought again. People, people don't fix up so easily. So much more important to protect the person inside. All right, that's the idea of impulse. Hope that was helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.